Hi everyone, it's me again, and uh, I would like to continue with a video on factors affecting the rate of reaction today. We have actually covered the definition and some important calculations of rate of reaction, and also the collision theory and on the the, the understanding of the energy uh, activation energy on the energy profile diagram or the energy level diagram. So today we are going to cover the factors affecting the rate of reaction and how to explain the factors in relation to the collision theory. So there are actually a total of five factors common in the syllabus on the rate of reaction. For the first factor, it will be the particle size or the total surface area of reactants, while the second one will talk about the concentrations of reactants, and the third one will be the temperature of the reaction, the fourth one will be the presence of gaseous system, the pressure of, sorry, the pressure of gaseous systems, and the fifth one will be the presence of catalyst. So among the five of them, they still re the depend on a common reaction, for example, A plus B to give C plus D. Talk about the factors affecting the rate of reaction. You will, you will see that different factors always relate to the reactants. For example, the particle size of the reactants. That means for the reactants A and B, we use whether they are in a large size or a smaller size, or the total surface area of the reactants. We never mention about the products. While for the concentration, it is also the same. That the, We have to mention it clearly that it is a concentration of the reactants because the reactants are the ones that involve to react and form the products. Talking about, about the temperature, it, is, it will involve the temperature of the whole reaction because for A and B to react to form C and D, it is reacting in a reaction vessel. So that will, in the, the temperature required will be the temperature of the whole reaction. While the pressure of gaseous system, it, it, always, it only involves the reactants in which they are gases. So, this particular factor we are not going to cover in detail for the form 4, form 5 syllabus. And the last factor will be the presence of catalyst. That means whether a particular reaction will undergo, uh, will, uh, whether a particular reaction to happen to form products will be helped by the presence of catalyst or not. So today we will go on to the first uh, factors affecting the rate, which is the particle size or the total surface area of reactant. Okay, look at this total surface area or the particle size of reactants. How to man how to mention uh, how to measure the total surface area or how to understand in detail on the particle size? It must be only related to solid reactants. So remember, if you have a particular reaction involve the solid reactants, then total surface area or the particle size will be one of the factors affecting the rate of reaction. For example, these two particular reaction. In A, we involve magnesium to react with hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid so this is a simple acid reaction to form salt and hydrogen gas so we know that magnesium is a solid so this one is a solid while this is an aqueous solution so as long as one of the reactants involve solid reactant as long as one of the reactant involves solid that means this particular reaction will be affected by total surface area of the solid reactants or the particle size of the solid reactant. For the reaction B, HCl is uh, acid, hydrochloric acid, and NaOH is an alkali, which is a sodium hydroxide. So both are also aqueous solution. So in this neutralization, when 
HCl, hydrochloric acid, reacting with NaOH, the sodium hydroxide, to form salt and water. This particular reaction does not involve any solid reactant. So if they does not involve solid reactant, then the whole reaction will not be affected by the factor of total surface area or the particle size. So now you understand how to apply the total surface area or the particle size already. And now we go into a little bit more detail. When we say particle size, that means it can be bigger or it can be smaller. When the particle size is smaller, that means it appears as powder or it appears as amorphous or it appears as tiny, draw, uh, tiny pellets. If the particle size is bigger, then it, 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 will, it will appear as granules. Uh, as a tape, magnesium tape for example. So all these are the particle size bigger. So when we have smaller particle size, that means the total surface area will be larger. If the particle size is smaller, the total surface area, remember it is a total area, will be larger. And hence the rate of reaction will increase. So how to imagine it in more detail? Taking this cube as an example, if this is a normal cube of 2 cm per side, so the total surface area will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 sides of 2 and 2, so that will be 6 multiplied by 2 and 2, which is 24 cm square. Well, if we divide this total, this big granule into four smaller cubes of two centimeter in length and one and one centimeter as their base, so for this four of these cuboids, the total surface areas will be four multiplied by one and one multiplied by two. Oh, sorry. So it is uh. Uh, this particular will be 2 multiplied by 4 plus 1 and 1, 2. That means a total of 40 cm square surface area compared to total surface area of only 24 cm square. So you can now see clearly that when the particle size getting smaller, the total surface area will actually increase. Okay, now, how to relate the total surface area back to collision theory? The question will always ask students to explain ex uh, a particular factor in uh, relation to the collision theory or in terms of collision theory. So by looking at this one, we, we will always start with what the total surface area will bring us or what the particle size will bring to us. So the first point will be when the particle size is getting smaller, the total surface area will definitely increase. Okay, when the total surface area is increasing, imagine in a larger cube, we now divide into a lot of smaller cubes. So the collision will happen between here, between here, between here, between here, and a lot of possibilities, rather than only collision happen between the six phases of the cube. So when the particle size is getting smaller, the total surface area is increasing, number of collision will increase okay so when number of collision increase then frequency of collision will increase as well so when the frequency of collision increase we will need to relate it back to frequency of effective collision in which frequency of collision increase, frequency of effective collision will increase. And hence, the rate of reaction will increase. So because of this, we managed to relate clearly on the 
factor, which is total surface area of solid reactants or particle size of the reactants, to the rate of reaction by using the collision theory. And the sequence will always be like this, in which the, when the particle size is getting smaller, the total surface area will increase. And with the increase in total surface area, number of collisions will increase as well, and hence the frequency of collisions increase. Then frequency of effective collision increase, and lastly, the rate of reaction increase. So now, I would like to share with you an example of a simple question like this, <clears throat> in which we have set 1 and set 2. So in set 1, 1 gram of small pieces of iron is used to react with 50 centimeter cube of 0 0.2 mole per decimeter cube of sulfuric acid. So this is again uh, an acid reaction with metal. At well set B, they use the question use one gram of iron fillings with fifty centimeter cube, zero point two mole per decimeter cube of sulfuric acid. So, student, if you are thrown with a question like this, in which you have two different sets, first thing first, you have to compare where are the differences. So, by looking at different conditions. We, have, we know that we have two different reactants over here. First one is iron and the second one is sulfuric acid. So we compare iron. One grams, the number of grams did not change. Of small pieces of iron, that means it is these pieces like this. While the second set, it is using one gram of iron fillings. Fillings means some powdery ions like this. And the second reactant is the sulfuric acid. So 50 centimeter cube of 0 0.2 mole per decimeter cube sulfuric acid. Compared to the second set, 50 centimeter cube of 0 0.2 mole per decimeter cube of sulfuric acid. So we know that for the sulfuric acid as reactant, nothing is changed. All are constant. The total volume is constant and the concentration of the sulfuric acid is also constant. That means the, the only factor affecting the rate of reaction over here must come from the iron. One, set 1 use small pieces and set 2 use iron fillings. So this one is talking about the particle size. With set 2 having smaller particle size, that means total surface area is increasing. So after you target the factors affecting the rate of reaction, then the question can be solved easily. We still need to go through the chemical equation. As usual, iron reacting with sulfuric acid to form a salt, zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas. So double check whether you need to do extra balancing. In this case, we don't need to do balancing. So this is the solid and this is the part where the factor applies to the solid reactor. So now, how if you would like to sketch a graph? By sketching a graph, we usually will sketch a graph of the hydrogen gas release against time because this is the this is one of the, the products which is easier to be measured. Volume of hydrogen gas will be sketched against time. Okay, so let's say we have the first line of set 1. Set 1 is by using 1 gram of small pieces of iron to react with 50 centimeter cube and 0 0.2 mole per decimeter cube of hydrogen uh, of sulfuric acid. So look at the chemical equation again. Both sets 1 and 2 also using 1 gram of zinc. And both sets also using 50 centimeter cube and 0 0.2 mole per decimeter cube 
of sulfuric acid. Other than the change in the pieces to fillings, no change at all on all the other uh, figures. And because of that, you can see clearly that if one gram of zinc reacting with the sulfuric acid, defi definitely the product's form will be constant as well because both sets use the same condition. Therefore, from here, we, will, we are very sure that the same products will be formed in both experiments. Same products will be formed in both experiments. So, because of the same products, now you know that in order to sketch the graph, we must meet at the end of the graph. Okay, so now let's start to sketch the graph. Set 1 using has been sketched like this. So now we are talking about set 2. And set 2 says that the iron fillings is replaced the small pieces of iron. That is, total surface area has increased. Because of the total surface area is increasing, the rate of reaction will also increases, increase. So because of this, in the graph sketch like this, that will be shown as a steeper gradient. So we will sketch it this way. I will use different color. And follow the same tail as the first experiment. So this will be the set two. And the blue color will be the set one. So do you understand now how to sketch a graph based on the factors affecting the rate of reaction? First, look at the difference between the graph between two sets to find out the difference and from the difference find out the factors affecting the rate of reaction. For example, over here we have the same conditions for sulfuric acid and we have the same mass of iron, but we have different particle sizes of the iron used. And because of that, this will be related to the particle size or the total surface area. And according to chemical equation, again, there are, there are no changes in the re reaction condition. And hence, there will be no changes in the product's formation as well. So during the graph sketching, make sure the tail of the two graphs to meet each other. Then we will sketch the graph according to the factor affecting the rate of reaction. If the factor is, in, is uh, given, giving higher rate of reaction, such as in this case, then the gradient will be steeper and the graph will appear over here. In another case, if the factor affecting will give a lower rate of reaction, then the gradient will be less steep in which it will appear at the bottom over here. So that's all for this uh, uh, first factor affecting the rate of reaction, the total surface area, and the particle size of solid reactants. Thank you.